moves up onto the front straight at Sandown after a couple of aborted starts. Difficult to try and get these cars off the line today. We've had some problems. Let's take a look at the way they're going to line up for round one of the Tui's Gold Star. And Mark Scaife has pole position with a 69.08. Alongside him, Simon Kane just four tenths slower. Then Drew Price in third position. From four, it's Ron Searle, 27. From five, John Briggs, car number 10. From position six, we have Stephen Cramp in a Reynard 89D, in fact. Chris Hocking is behind him, position seven. Ron Barnacle, position eight. Brian Sampson in nine. Lucio Cesario in the Rolf, position number 10. Car number 16. Just outside that group, we've also got Mark Larkham, who's running a Reynard 90D, one of the new look Formula Brabham's for 1992. We've now taken it uh, one step further with this class, and we welcome British Formula 3000 regulations in terms of chassis to this event, in this class, and so we've been able to import more up-to-date chassis, carbon fibre construction, as used in the British and International 3000 Championships. Ten seconds is the signal. Green flag at the rear of the field means that everybody has their engine running. Drivers put the cars in gear. Let's get this thing on the road with a green light as quickly as we can. And Scaife makes a good jump, but Kane has stalled. The car spluttering. Let's hope he doesn't get clouded. I think the field gets through cleanly. Yeah, they've all snuck past. Disaster for Simon Kane, the national champion in 1990. They squeeze through that very tight corner at the top of the straight. There's Scaife in the Winfield Spa. Head of the Eastern Creek Shrike with Ronnie Searle aboard and John Briggs, I believe, in third as they help the back straight for the first time. Dreadful start from Simon Kane. I think he's up and running okay again now. But it's Scaife. Oh, slowing dramatically at the end of the back straight. And Ronnie Searle goes by. Well, with all think? the starts, Neil, he's probably lucky that whether he's got any plates left in his clutch. He may be nursing it. He seemed to have a bad run out of that corner, but he's picked him up on the way down the hill. Ooh, Scaife having a look on the inside. Mark and the Winfield team have ordered a 91 model Lola in this carbon fiber construction that'll be used in the latter part of this championship. For the moment, they're sticking with the car that they ran so successfully last year at Eastern Creek. And of course, Mark picked up the national championship and wears the number one plate. But it's Ron Searle, ex Formula Ford man, car number 27, the Eastern Creek car built by the Adelaide Tafe College, Croydon Park, prepared by Mike Quinn. And he's doing a great job. He's got a small gap. Scaife's in second place, being assaulted by Drew Price in a Rolt RT20. Good time from Drew in practice. The car's pretty pitchy and wobbly there, but he's um, very competitive. This is a great run from Ron Searle. He's uh, had a lot of experience in the Formula Brabham's, mainly a Formula Ford man doing the Formula Ford Championship again this year. And he's certainly got good form here at Sandown in this opening round. John Briggs also making a comeback to the class. And... Steve Cramp, there's Cesario, car number 16, making his way to the pit, so he's got a problem. Lucio's got a flat tyre, it seems. It's a bit of bad luck for the guy. Look at the gap. Have a look at this gap that Ron Searle's generating. This is tremendous. Car that's probably not quite as quick as the SPA. Certainly didn't qualify nearly as quickly. It's quicker today, now. Yeah, they've done a great job getting this car into a good race trim. And Mark Poole did very well in a... Strike chassis in 1990. Steve Cramp also mixed up in that group. He's got a Reynard 89D from uh, from the UK. This is one of the carbon fibre cars. And these other cars that we're looking at now are constructed from honeycomb aluminium. The tubs are all uh, honeycomb aluminium and various aluminium componentry. But the car that Cramp drives is Drew Price has a, a big go on the outside. So it doesn't quite no. get through. But we think Scaife's got a problem here because he seems to be very slow coming out of the corners of his straight. It wouldn't surprise me, like Alan said a moment ago, if he had a little problem with uh, perhaps clutch or gearbox. But uh, who knows, we're in a commentary box. But It's a great run from Ronnie Searle with a shrike. Remember when Mark Paul campaigned a similar car to this in 1990? His main complaint that it was quite a difficult car to set up, but he certainly came very close to winning the championship that year. Here's the radar I mentioned on the right-hand side, the blue and white car. That's a Rolt RT21 on the left. John Briggs at the helm, a car owned by Dave Moore, driven by John Smith a couple of seasons ago, and Rowan Onslow's had a go in it as well, and Keith Carling. Here the car's just bottoming out as they go over the top of the rise there, very low ride heights, get great ground effect benefit from the floors in these cars. They're powered by a 3.8 litre V6 fuel injected Holden engine. Fastest racing cars in Australia, you can see by the lap time, 69 odd seconds around Sandown. They're not mucking about and if you can get one trim just right and get the thing working perfectly, you can just about get over the end of that back straight flat. 36 year old Drew Price tucks into second place there. 
eight times Australian karting champion, spent some time with Toyota Team Australia, very successful in Corollas. And now he's taken his turn in the open wheelers and he's really relishing this task. Well, so anybody with uh, some past car experience, car control, with the infinite settings that you can get out of a single-seater race car, if you don't have it working for you, it's your own fault, isn't it, Neil? That's very true, Alan, and I guess that's the biggest single difference between a car with a roof and this type of car, and you can just fine-tune to perfection if you've got enough time and money, and uh, there are no compromises in the way the car's handled. It's 160 mile an hour through that fast left hand at the end of the back straight, and it's so rough down here, it tends to bounce your feet out of the foot box in the cars, very hard to pull them up for that tight left hander. The second gear corner, and then shoot back out under the Dunlop Bridge and off on another lap. Very little between these leading two cars. We've got Drew Price tucked right in behind Ron Searle. Mark Scape certainly struggling in third place at the moment. But this is a great start to the Tui's Championship for the Australian Drivers uh, Gold Star Award. And uh, who would have thought that the, the Croydon Park car would be the pick of the bunch today? Ron Searle doing a magnificent job. Really got his hands full here, though. Drew Price absolutely filling his mirrors with the blue and white car. Ron will be really feeling the pressure now. Half race distance, it was a shortened race because of the problems at the start. We have an eight lapper rather than the ten. So the grin on Ron's face will probably be getting a little bigger if he's just praying for that chequered flag. Those three guys have now opened up a gap over John Briggs and Stephen Cramp. But I'm really excited, Mark, by the prospect of these new cars in the country. This is going to, to uh, make our fields larger. It puts our young blokes right in tune with modern race car technology and any young bloke with the will, the money, the determination and the skill to be able to go on to Europe and get into uh, Formula 3, Formula 3000 and so on is going to be better prepared if you can drive an up-to-date race car and that's what these sort of things are. There's Steve Cramp, that's a Raynard 89D model. And uh, there's also a 90 model here as well. Last year in the 91 International Formula 3000 Championship, the Reynard was the very successful car, designed by your brother, in fact. <laughs> Don't know how that happened, it must have been a mistake. Oh, and the hocking car spins at the back of the field there. Saved it nicely with that arm call waiting for him if he had it been going much faster. The big 360. Went to the whole field to pass. An intensely competitive category in Japan, Britain and across Europe. Formula 3000. Uh, it's very much the understudy formula for tomorrow's Formula 1 drivers. Cars are uh, very stiffly sprung, very rigid in the cockpit. A lot of the emphasis on aerodynamics. And uh, the brave boys that run these things in those three countries and can get to the front of the field are tomorrow's Formula 1 drivers. And now you've had experience of converting one of these 3000 cars to a V6 hold then, and how much does it affect the, the dynamics of the car when it's set up for say a 450 horsepower Cosworth or Mugen V8? Well obviously when, when I drove a car with a Judd V8 in, the, in a round of the British Formula 3000 Championship, those engines are much sweeter, they rev further and there's just generally more car speed, but uh, the V6 holds a little bit heavier now, we have two laps to go incidentally Mark. Um, the V6 holds a little bit heavier but has almost the same torque value so requires the same sort of driver skills to be able to get the car across the corner and out of the corner cleanly. We have to change our, um, our shock absorber and spring balance and just the general balance of the car to compensate for that. But um, the cars are still very good to drive and I've got a real soft spot for them. I love them. I think they're, they're tremendous. They're probably, probably uh, as fast and as thrilling a vehicle as you can drive. This is Mark Larkham, Raynard 90D. He's in ninth position. Poor old Mark this weekend in the Mitre 10 car, which is owned by Peter Boylan, the fellow that owned uh, my cars for the last couple of years. He's just had the most disgusting weekend. They just got the car into the country in time, rebuilt the engine, got it all on there, and they keep having some gearbox hassles this weekend. They didn't think they were going to make it, but it's fabulous that they could. Look at the assault for the lead from Drew Price down Whoop. the inside. Tears the wing off. Searle goes into the fence. Goodness me. Desperate stuff. All this plays into the hands of Mark Scaife. Side by side down to the right hander. The Scaife, got... oh, he's going to get through. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. To go. That just fell into very nicely to Mark Scaife's hands. Now he takes the lead through, Price gets pushed back to second, and the guy who's been leading the race from lap one. That's incredible. And he's sitting over there in the sand trap, the nose of the car, and Drew Price sneaks past Scaife again. Scaife definitely has a straight line problem with this car, but he really nails him back under brakes. Look at Drew's car. Gee, it looks a bit ugly in the bump, bumpy stuff down there, but Ron Searle, a problem in that 
left-hander at Dandenong Road. We'll take a look at that and see precisely what happened. We're on the last lap. Now, Drew made a big lunge down the inside, tried to straight line the corner, just clipped his wing, and it was enough to upset Ronnie's car. Gets out in the marbles, tries to put some opposite on it, can't recover it, bang, into the fence. Won't be much damage, but he'll have plenty of steam coming out his ears. Yeah, and he won't be buying him a drink after the race no. either. I think it was fairly uncalled for, to tell you the truth. Perhaps a little bit desperate, but Drew's in the lead at the moment. Look at the bodywork, the... Uh, left side pod on the Rolts looking a bit skew whiff and now Scaife has got to make the all-time lunge oh. he's going to try and do what Drew did the danger with that is that you saw what happened you can just understeer off in those marbles now Mark's got to have another big go here if he can do it remember that he's the reigning champion in this class he lost a bit of speed coming out of the corner he was so heavy on the brakes trying to get inside Drew his big wish is to be the Australian touring car champion Bathurst winner and the Australian driving champion is shaking his head in disbelief. There's obviously something wrong, but Drew Price is going to record a fabulous win, and congratulations to him and his team. The Rolt RT20 takes the chequered flag. Drew Price the winner. Mark Scaife in second place. An enormous gap back to third place, and uh, that's Steve Cramp. Great result for his new Reynard. More development to come there. And then a hefty gap then back, I think, to John Briggs, but I'll have to confirm that. So what an exciting opening round for the Tui's. Australian Drivers' Championship and the chequered flag going there to Drew Price. And race score tells the story. We'll get the top five for you there. And Mark congratulates Drew. OK, Tui's race score shows Drew Price the winner in the Rolt RT20 from Mark Scaife in the Winfield Spa. Steve Cramp, a great result in the Reynard third place. John Briggs is fourth in car number 10. And Ron Barnacle, a great drive. Car number four, position five. And we'll have more motor racing after the break. <laughs> 